Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Man shot and killed in downtown Kingston. The police are proving the murder of a man on Orange Street in Kingston on Thursday morning. The deceased is identified only by his alias Joe and is believed to be a chef in the area. The deadly shooting reported the occurred sometime after 7 a.m. Motorists were diverted to other roadways. 70-year-old man shot to death in St. Elizabeth. An elderly man was found dead at his home in Greenfield District, St. Elizabeth, on Thursday. Police believe the man, identified as 70-year-old contractor Amos Thompson, otherwise called Conroy, was killed Wednesday night. Thompson was also a United States resident. It was reported that around 11.45 p.m., residents heard explosions but did not summon the police. Around 6.50 Thursday morning, the police were called to the location after residents alerted them to the presence of the body. The police arrived and saw a crowd gathered in the yard and upon investigating, saw Thompson's body inside a Honda CRV motor vehicle which was parked in a garage. Police said a section of the deceased man's body was partially outside the vehicle. He was clad in great colored underpants and a gold looking watch. The yard was cleared and the scene was processed by the police. In the Compropes Cops Killing of Alleged Bus Thief in Clarendon The Independent Commission of Investigations in the Com has launched a probe into the circumstances surrounding the shooting death of an alleged bus thief by police at Fuga Road in Four Pass Clarendon on Thursday morning. The dead man is believed to be 31-year-old Gaylor Patton from Watermore District in Porus, Manchester. Information which in the indicates that around 3.45 a.m., the police received a report that a blue 2008 Toyota Heist minibus was robbed from a man in Lincoln, Manchester. Assistance was sought and the Manchester police, having received additional information, proceeded to Clarendon Park in Clarendon, where the vehicle was spotted. Efforts were made to stop the car using the beacon lamp and not speak of the police service vehicle, but this proved futile as the bus reportedly sped along the thoroughfare towards the direction of Maypen. The police reported they gave chase. The vehicle then drove onto Fogo Road off the Bustamante Highway and collided with a tree before coming to a stop. Three men, the police said, then alighted from the bus and opened gunfire at them. The lawmen returned fire. When the shooting subsided, one man was seen suffering from what appeared to be gunshot wounds. He was rushed to the Mapin Hospital where he was pronounced dead. Seven-year-old suspected of joining in Portland A seven-year-old girl is suspected to have joined in a community pit filled with water in Orange Bay, Portland on Wednesday. The girl has been identified as Onila Wilkes of Walk Lane District in Orange Bay, Portland. Reports from the Portland Police are that about 8.30 a.m., Residents saw the girl's body afloat in the pit and alerted the police. On their arrival, the scene was processed and the body retrieved and taken to the morgue. NRSC urges road users to be extremely vigilant as busy Christmas weekend approaches. As the busy Christmas weekend approaches, the National Road Safety Council is urging road users to be extremely vigilant and obey the rules of the road. The warning comes as road fatalities record across the island surged to 407. Executive Director of the Council, Paula Fletcher, notes that with the increased activities at this time of the year, there is usually an increase in traffic. She says motorists should ensure that they plan their commute properly to avoid being tempted to speed. Ms. Fletcher says carpooling should be considered to help erase the congestion on the roadways. Noting that alcohol consumption is usually increased on the Christmas period, she urges persons to have designated drivers when attending events. The road safety executive is also urging motorists to obey speed limits. She notes further that reckless overtaking causes many accidents. Ms. Fletcher says drivers should exercise patience. A lot of activity on the roads, a lot of functions to attend, a lot of visiting, uh, people coming from abroad, shopping, you know, various events. So you're going to have a greater number of vehicles on the road. What I think we ought to do is plan how we go about all these various activities, giving us time to reach from point A to point B. So you need a half an hour to get to your destination. You might have to double that or even triple it depending on the time of day. Speeding is typically, no matter what time of year, the main cause actually of fatal crashes. So let us observe the speed limit. It's really 
a simple enough thing to do, you know. People are given to speeding sometimes, and they figure that they keep, you know, getting home safely. But they're going to be that one time when there's something in the traffic environment that surprises them, and they're not able to stop. Whether it's misjudgment or the fact that they don't have the power to accelerate enough to clear the vehicle that they're overtaking, and then there may be an oncoming vehicle. So there must be a proper assessment of your ability of your car to perform on a roadway. The actual speed limit of that roadway, we should take that into consideration. The other thing is, what, and it's very prevalent, the use of cell phones while driving. So it is said among road safety practitioners that it's similar to driving drunk. The only thing is that once you put down your cell phone, you're no, no longer drunk, so to speak. We need to take better decisions to ensure that our journey is a safe one. 50 license suspended. Approximately 50 motorists have their license suspended since the new Road Traffic Act came in force in February. While no motorist has had his or her driver's license revoked so far, the Traffic Chief Assistant Commissioner of Police, ACP Gary McKenzie, has one motorist to obey the rules of the road or they will feel the effects of the law when they are accumulated enough demerit points from their driver's license to be suspended and could also be revoked. The new law, which significantly updates fines and penalties for breaches, took effect on February 1, and since this time, the police say that more than 500,000 tickets have been issued to motorists for various offences. This has, however, not based to the recorded number of 720,694 traffic tickets issued for breaches on the road code last year. I believe that the increase in fines and points for some offences have made a difference. The addition of the offence of driving whilst using a cell phone is impactful, said Mackenzie, who heads the Public Safety and Traffic Enforcement Branch of the Jamaica Constabulary Force. He told reporters that the offence motorists are mostly ticketed for is failing to wear seatbelts, for which more than 100,000 tickets have been issued, followed by driving at excessive speed, with more than 60,000 tickets issued. Under the legislation, an accumulation of traffic tickets for offences including speeding, driving operating vehicle while using electronic communication device, and careless driving causing collision, no result in demerit points added to the driver's license. ACP Mackenzie noted that licenses are suspended through the courts or when motors accumulate 10 or more points. Among the repercussions for the offence of speeding under the demerit system, with the accumulation of 10 to 14 demerit points over a 12-month period, is the suspension of the license and or payment of fines. To get back the license, the driver is required to complete training on the dangers of speeding by a certified driving instructor and pass a written test administered by the Island Traffic Authority ITA. However, if after 15 months a driver has accumulated demerit points that are fewer than those required for a suspension of the license, then the points will expire and the record cleared. Under the new Road Traffic Act, Drivers with outstanding traffic tickets will not be able to transfer titles of vehicle, renew driver's license, or pay fitness and registration fees. Previously, drivers will accumulate traffic tickets were still able to conduct their transactions at the tax office. In the meantime, ACP McKenzie said he believes that the police have been fairly effective in enforcement of the new road traffic act. He said that the electronic ticketing system has greatly improved the enforcement and has ensured greater compliance as it relates to prosecutions. He noted, for example, the payment for infractions have now moved from 30% to approximately 55%. In June this year, the Ministry of National Security has reported that the digitalized trafficking ticketing management system has resulted in greater efficiencies, reducing the number of issues associated with the manual writing tickets by 90%. The system allowed the police to issue tickets using a mobile device and printer. The data instantly uploads the centralized TTMS database, which is accessible by the JCF, the traffic course, and all other government agencies that depend on traffic ticket information. The digitalized system has reduced the time it takes for the police to issue a traffic ticket, and there has also been an increase in the number of traffic tickets being issued, with the number now averaging 7,000 per week. ACP McKenzie said he is of the belief 
that motorists are not as aware as they should be about what is contained in the New World Traffic Act. As such, he is advising them to visit the Ministry of Justice's website to get more acquainted with the new regulations. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification.